Hello you bearded bastards and welcome to another episode of Short Forts. Allow me to welcome you to the universe of griffins. This is a brand spanking new world created specifically for this episode. And down here by this wagon we see our starting seven dwarves. Here they are, seven dwarves known as the Sack of Silver, that's this group's name. And now these dwarves here are attempting to start a new fortress here at the foot of the Silken Spine Mountains, which lie just to the north of the Pine Forest known as the Jungles of Grizzle. A bizarre name. Now this small group of dwarves here is attempting to start a fortress known as Trade Hoof, or Nishunos, and they have a simple symbol, a shoe filled with coins. Now I figured just taking a look at these dwarves here, trade hoof, sacks of silver, they're probably a bunch of merchants, they've got a few donkeys with them. I don't think they have any grand plans here, maybe just a little, little general store, a place for merchants to stop off on their way. Maybe not the most motivated dwarves, we can see they're all peasants, as you can tell by their green color here. Oh, and actually another quick note here, if you watch my other Dwarf Fortress videos, you may notice that the colors of the, uh, the, the game here have been changed slightly. I went in and edited them, so that they all kind of appear a little bit warmer now, a little bit more mellow. I kind of like it. I wasn't so sure at first, but uh, you know, you could tell here, they're not as bright as usual. Oh, and also I did change my tile set up a bit, so that the text appears as the original vanilla text, but I left all the symbols just unchanged. And I think this is how I'm going to keep it from now on, I really like this. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Now then, these dwarves here, uh, they don't plan on any gigantic fortress, just a tiny little place. A little place, want to just carve it out, no big deal, just a place where they can hang their hats, I'm thinking. These aren't the most ambitious dwarves, I don't think. Now, um, let's see, a place to do this. How about right where they are? This little nook right here, yeah, I kind of like that. Now, I'm just going to make a tiny little place for them, just real quick. There we go, just like that. Dwarves are going to start carving out those tunnels, shouldn't take long, going to get some trees cut down over here. Now I'm also trying to make this fortress just to show you how little you can live with in this game. It's just going to be a tiny little place, I did some testing recently and you need surprisingly little to keep your dwarves absolutely satisfied. A fortress like this, the one that you see right here, will keep my dwarves more than happy for probably a year anyways, with very little problem. Now I'm taking a look at some of these dwarves here just to get an idea of what they look like. It seems that the dwarves of this civilization here tend to have sepia skin, uh, chocolate colored hair, so what, brown I guess, and copper eyes. And they also seem to favor ponytails. That's pretty cool. It's good to get to know the dwarves that you're working so close with, you know? Anyways, back to work I suppose. Alright, and I guess that's pretty much gonna about do it for the fortress. You can see we have the entry hall here, kind of circles around to the actual fortress proper. We have a farm plot going, a little tiny meeting hall here as well as a small dormitory and a storage area. So yeah, I'd say we're actually looking pretty good. Now again, a side note, dwarves could be absolutely fine living in this place here for at least a year. Much longer than that though, and uh, we'd, we would start having some problems, but a year is certainly not out of the question. Now a tiny little dwarven fortress like that, that's uh, you know all fine and dandy, but it's not that interesting really. Now the main focus of our episode today will be towards the south. Now just to the south, I, I think it's to the south anyways, there is a dark tower, home of necromancers. Now my idea for this episode is to retire this fortress and just have it become part of the world, but then start an adventurer. Go into adventure mode, go to this necromancer tower, and once inside I'm going to look for, uh, they, have, they have a slab in there, which you can read, and if you do so, you will in turn become a necromancer. Now I'm curious if I brought that here, if my dwarves could read it. Also from what I understand there's necromancer books as well, and I, I don't think dwarves can read slabs, but I know they can read books, so I think if I grabbed one of their books I, I could bring it here and then they'll read it? I'm not sure, I, I don't know how that works. And you may think it's just easier to look online for answers to this sort of thing, but I get a lot of misinformation about this game online. Sometimes it's best just to figure things out by yourself, I think. And so that's what we're going to do today. All right, Trade Hoof, you uh, just kind of sit here for a little bit, all right? And we'll get right back to you. Now we will retire Trade Hoof for the time being. And there we are. And now that our fortress is retired, let's start playing Adventurer Mode. And we're given the options of Elf, Goblin, Human, or Intelligent Wilderness Creature. No Dwarf, oddly enough. Now let's see, we're going to want something that can start near our fortress. Um, hmm. Well, how about an animal person? That's always interesting, right? Let's see, what are we feeling like today? Normally I'd go random, but um, so many options, I don't know. Well, I mean, whatever we're going to pick uh, it might end up being a necromancer. So maybe we should pick something that seems like it could be a necromancer. A devious creature. Ah, 
Yep, I think I got it. Where's your crab man? Let's do it. From Anthath Chateau, the Confederation of Auras. Pick some random stats real quick. It's gotta be a good dodger. Can't forget a point in reading so we can actually read this slab and become a necromancer. Very important. And our hero's name shall be Uthra Medinaku. Uthra Candy Grooves. A true necromancer name, if ever I heard one. All right now, Uthra, let's uh, let's get out there. Let's do this thing. So I start off in my tiny little house here with my uh, another another human. Rather, I well, I mean, with a human. I'm not a human. I'm a horseshoe crab man. Let's see what I have here. A bronze long sword, an iron shield, uh, various clothing bits, a backpack, a dagger. Fairly standard fare. Now, I'm gonna set off as an adventurer, leaving from this human hamlet here. I have to imagine our hero here, uh, maybe led a life of persecution, maybe just never really fit in here. Not hard to imagine, really. People find it difficult to approach you when you have such a hard carapace, but they don't know how soft you are on the inside. And so we head out. We have to find our own way in this world. We've never been accepted here, and so we must now forge our own path. And we're gonna head north out of town, through these jute plant fields. Our new life is about to begin. All right, just gonna go north, north, north. Oh boy, uh, wolves. That's not premium. Uh, let's, uh, let's try to sprint away from, boy, they're fast. They're really, really incredibly fast. Um, yeah, not great. All right, well, I guess we're gonna have to fight. Seven wolves? Yeah, that's not great. Throw a dagger. Ooh, I hit one. Can I climb? Can I get up this tree? Hmm, that's interesting. Ouch. Ouch. Wow, yeah, those guys kind of hurt. I, I did manage to climb up. I'm up the tree now. Wow, that hurt. Okay, um, right now I'm just kind of kind of waiting up here. Waiting. And the wolves don't really seem like they're going to leave. Huh. Well, you know, not really like the best way to start a journey or a new life or anything. Oy. Yeah, let's sit up here for an hour, see what happens. Oh, it looks like I came out of the tree and I don't see any wolves. That's Great, and so we continue. Onwards. Oh, I think this is the tower right here. Let's approach carefully. All right, it's just to our west. I don't think that's it right there. Yep, a big red tower. Very interesting. Just gonna have to head around looking for a door, I guess. Oh, a couple of zombies here. Yikes, all right, that's uh, not stellar. You know, I guess I was kind of making it sound like I'd just waltz into this place and grab that slab or some books real quick. But, you know, I don't know, maybe I was being a little naive. Yeah, I mean, I guess when you think about it, um, a, a tiny pack of wolves almost killed me. <laughs> I guess I probably don't stand that much of a chance against an army of undead. Yeah, wow, there are a lot of them, huh? You know, I'm thinking maybe I can just kind of lead them away from the tower, then like kind of circle around and head back in there or something. Hey, well, it looks like these things can't swim, so that's pretty good. Noted. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna get back to you in just a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can figure out a way into that tower. And if I do, I'll get right back to you in just a moment. All right, just let that big group away. I'm gonna see if I can get back up to the tower and just hop in real quick. Okay, we're in the tower. Oh, we have some options here too. Two doors, a hatch, and a stairway. Mm, I think I'm feeling hatchy. Okay, a couple more doors. Oh, uh, Necromancer is chasing me here. Not gonna worry about it though. Keep going down. More Necromancers, fantastic. Excuse me, sir. We're in a back room now. Looking around, looking around. Yeah, I don't see anything down here. Uh, how about this stairway here? I don't know if those zombies are still chasing me. Hmm, anything in there? Just some more Necromancers. Like a lot of Necromancers. Oh, hey now, there's a slab here. Neuro will spin. Judge Cradles. A Electrum slab. Oh, I'm gonna have to saunter on over there. Excuse me, excuse me, I know. I'm so rude. Snag this little, this bad baby real quick. And just gonna read it even quicker. There we are. You read Neuro will spin. The secrets of life and death. You have learned the power to animate corpse. Fantastic. Okay, so now Uthra is a necromancer. Very good. All right, and now since we are a necromancer, um, I don't think those zombies can attack me now. Now, as I was saying earlier, I don't think dwarves can read this slab. So I'm going to grab some of these books. I don't know what a necromancer book looks like exactly. All right, how about this one here? I'm going to pick up this one. It's called Death Explained. Okay, it says this book uh, concerns the secrets of life and death. 
Alrighty, so maybe I'll just grab a bunch of these books here. Alright, so I just grabbed a whole load of books. Um, a zombie just wandered into the room and looks to be coming for me. So I'm actually gonna skedaddle on out of here. Oh, yep, just, uh, just punched me. Good, thank you. Ouch. Okay, yep, ow. I'd love to escape. Oh, sick. I just killed a zombie by smashing it in the head with this slab. Yeah, it's pretty sick. Now, I'm not too sure why it was attacking me. That's a bit worrisome, though. If there's others coming for me, I'm gonna be screwed, I think. If I could at least stand up, that'd be helpful. Okay, we're outside now. Getting some distance. I don't see any zombies. All right, and I think we're good, actually. Well, that's fantastic, I'll tell you. Oh, yes. So we just successfully pilfered a necromancer tower. We have a load of necromancer books and a pretty sick electrum slab. You know what? The first day of this new life turned out pretty good. Except now I've got a broken leg or something. I guess that's a downside. Heading up north now towards the Silken Spine Mountains. Well, and it's just becoming nighttime. But I think I've found this settlement. Well, I'll tell you what, this looks like a good place to take a rest, huh? Let's head inside and, uh, you know, catch some Z's or something. There we are. I'll just set down this slab here and, uh, all these cumbersome books. There we are. They're all just kind of sitting on the ground now. And, uh, yeah, guess, uh, I'll retire for the day. No, I'm being facetious, of course. I'm going to retire this adventurer at this location, which is Trade Hoof, the fortress we made. Okay, so we're back to the main menu, and we're gonna go into fortress mode again. Going to unretire a fortress, and here we are once more. All right, now uh, let's take a look around here before I unpause the game. All right, we can see Uthra here down in this stockpile. Very interesting. Okay, and if we take a look at our uh, unit list here, it looks like Uthra is doing absolutely fine. He counts as one of our citizens now, not as an enemy, which is very odd. That is very interesting. All right, well, uh, let's see what happens, I guess. Hopefully he doesn't just go off and start uh, like attacking my dwarves or something. All right, you know, he seems to be just collecting plump helmets and putting them in the stockpile, just like any of my other citizens. Yeah, wow, uh, seems like a, like a pretty cool dude, actually. Huh. Well, that's something. Neato. Now, I'm sensing an opportunity here. A little role-playing opportunity, I guess. So we have our horseshoe crab man, who never fit into the human civilization which he was a part of, wanted to start a new life, stumbled into a necromancer tower, became a necromancer, sort of by accident, I guess, and then soon after, stumbled into this group of dwarves who are, uh, you know, just kind of unmotivated little merchants at this tiny little fortress area here. I'm thinking Uthra probably wants to make something of this. Maybe he sees a potential here? Yeah, I kind of like that. Maybe he can use his new powers to help compel these dwarves, make this fortress his own. I'm liking that idea, big time. You know, I'm not too sure how long it's going to take my dwarves to start reading those books. Maybe I need a library first? But while we wait, I'm going to start forming this fortress here into a, you know, kind of a, I guess a horseshoe crab man necromancer sort of a fortress. That's very bizarre. Yeah, I'm going to see what we can do though. Because this, this isn't going to work here. Yeah, just give me a bit and uh, I'll get back to you if anything interesting happens in the meantime. And, uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Oh boy, that kind of stinks. All right, we just had a, a cave-in on the surface here. I'm not sure what happened exactly. But, uh, we already have a dead dwarf and our expedition leader is severely wounded. Multiple broken bones, that sort of stuff. Not great. Uh, not much we could do either, unfortunately. Now, not too much time has gone by. It's currently late autumn, and you can see we are doing some, uh, a little bit of mining here on the surface. There was a, a big mound of stone here on the surface, right here, that we're now kind of forming into a fortress. It's coming along pretty okay. One, two, three, four, five Z levels tall currently. Kind of a big pyramid slash ziggurat sort of a deal. Yes, I think this is gonna make a fine fortress. Better than what we currently have anyways. Now, we do have this dead dwarf here now. Um, now, I don't think Uther has been exposed to a dead body yet. I'm curious to see if they'll just automatically uh, revive things as animated corpses. That'd be pretty interesting, I think. So I guess we could try that out, huh? I guess first we should make a little uh, a test chamber for this, don't you think? Uh, I'll do that over here, what do you say? All right, so there we have it. I made a little office here for our necromancer. Now, the idea is, um, well, f first of, of course, I've got a little table and a chair for him. But I also have these fortifications here, which look into this small room. I'm gonna throw a couple corpses into that little, uh, that room on the side and just try to get my necromancer in there and see if anything happens. Again, I don't know if he's just gonna bring corpses back to life just automatically or what. Let's give it a shot, huh? All right, we have a couple corpses in there now. Our expedition leader and, uh, appears to be a carpenter. Not sure what killed them, but whatever. Lock this door right here. All right, and we should be good. 
right? And he's heading over. He's in the room. And he left. Okay, so he didn't automatically turn them into zombies. Good to know. All right, I'm gonna lock him in there for now. And I'm gonna unlock this door. And yeah, uh, he actually just went over that corpse there. And uh, he didn't turn it into a zombie. I guess necromancers won't turn just any old corpse into a zombie. It might be that they have to be in combat to do it. That'll be an interesting test. Plus, it doesn't look like any of my dwarves are reading those books yet. Again, I might need a library first. We'll get this whole thing sorted out before the end of this episode, I'm sure. Now the fortress is coming along here. We have our entryway, a place for a trade depot, a throne room for our new necromancer lord, a small area on the side here for, uh, I don't know, storage or something, and an additional room up here for a library. Looking good, I'd say. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna get back to work on the fortress here, and I'll get back to you if anything interesting happens. I'll be right back. Oh boy. The dead walk, hide while you still can. All right, well, it looks like we have a necromancer here. We have a couple corpses, a couple elves and a goblin corpse. And the necromancer itself is a serpent man, a large white snake with the arms and torso of a man. These creatures are evil and live far underground. He is incredibly skinny, his scales are white, his eyes are black. Very interesting. Well, I'm not too sure what we could do about this. All right, now, uh, seeing as how we don't have a military at all, it's looking like our only option is just to lock ourselves in the fortress here, which sucks, yes, Um, but, you know, gotta do what you gotta do, I guess. I just set up a burrow real quick, and everybody get there, please. Game is unpaused, let's go. All right, one, two, three. Come on, guys, where are you? Oh, looks like some of these dwarves are carrying boulders. That's not great. Come on, guys, hurry up. Okay, we've got a couple of them in here now, and it looks like one of them dropped a boulder in the doorway, so we can't lock that door anymore. Great. I'm gonna try to get some more up real quick. All right, another dwarf in. Get those doors up. Oh, boy, I forgot all about my donkeys over here. Ugh, they're gonna get slaughtered by zombies. Well, whatever, it'll slow them down, I guess. Hey, we got these doors up here, so I'm gonna lock them real quick. All locked up, and, uh, we're good. Well, I have to imagine Uther is not too happy with this turn of events, but you gotta make do, right? We'll get our revenge. But for now, we gotta clean this place up if we're gonna be stuck in here for a while. There are four zombies on the map currently. I really don't think my dwarves can handle them. It appears that they're armed, too. A pike dwarf zombie, a goblin spearman corpse, yeah, it's dangerous. Let's just get it nice in here for now, I guess. That'll be fine. Oh boy, we just had a turn here. Uh, not great. Alright, looks like an elf bowman came down through the ceiling. There was unfortunately a hole in the ceiling I did not know about, but it kind of popped down on top of our necromancer. And, uh, something interesting here. Okay, so the horseshoe crab man necromancer kicked the elf corpse in his hand, and it knocked the elf corpse's hand off, okay? And then the horseshoe crab man necromancer gestures, and the elf left hand shudders and begins to move. So he actually just brought that elf's hand back to life. But now, um, it, it appears the elf hand is moving through my fortress, and it does not look to be a good elf hand. It appears in this list here with the other enemies. That's not a great thing, really. I mean, when you get down to it. All right, um, Uthra, don't do that anymore, okay? Just maybe hold off for a little bit. Oh, he's getting the shit beat out of him. Oh man, he's not doing good in there. What just happened? All right, he he uh he killed that elf, so that's good. And now he's sitting in this dormitory here. He appears to be wounded. Yeah, some of his limbs are broken. He should be fine though, I would imagine. Now uh, we have this elf corpse over here, as well as these damn holes in our ceiling. Let's see if we can get that fixed up real quick. Okay, put some supports up over here, and we're good. Okay, thankfully. Uh, looks like we're totally safe now. I think. Now, if you're wondering, that happens when there's a tree above ground here, right above some underground area. When you chop it down, it leaves a hole. And you know, if you're not careful about it, then you can have some serious problems like that. But we look to be good now. Now we're down to six dwarves, but we can survive down here indefinitely, I think. Now I'm going to attempt to resume nicening this place up a little bit. And once I get it in a pretty okay state, I'll get back to you. I'll be right back. Alrighty, I'd say that puts us in a proper order for now anyways. We have some nice stone floors and walls now for the most part. A larger storage area. And over on the left here you can see our necromancer's new quarters, his office, his uh, corpse pile, a little dining room, his bedroom where he is currently, still wounded. His legs are broken and I keep making splints for him and our medical dwarf keeps applying them to him. But, uh, you know, he's not back up on his feet yet, so I'm not too sure what the deal is there. You know, I'm curious because I know when you become a necromancer, you also become undead. 
and I'm not sure if that means he can heal himself anymore. That's a tad worrisome, because if he can't heal himself automatically, then he's just going to be sitting in his bedroom from now on, but eh, whatever. Okay, a couple things I want to try here is I want to erect that slab in his bedroom, and I'm going to put it in this little back chamber right here. There we are. And up over here, you can see I actually made a library as well. Now, I haven't actually made it a library zone yet, so let's do that. First, we'll make this library room into a zone, like that. Then turn that into a meeting hall, and assign a location. Then we will add a location, a library. And you can see now our library is called the Blockaded Sanctuary. I'd say that's apt, seeing as how we can't escape this place now. Now we'll go to location details down here, and we can choose a scholar or a scribe. I think scholars write books and scribes copy books. You know, maybe we should have some scribes so we can start copying those books. The necromancer books, that is. That'd be pretty cool. Well, it looks like the dwarves are bringing books to the library now. That's good. Oh, here's something interesting. Tossid, one of the scribes, is reading a chromite-bound codex. That's one of the necromancer books that we brought back from the tower, I believe. Let's watch. Alright, I think he finished reading it. Hmm, well it doesn't say anything about him being a necromancer now. Well, it might just be that that particular book wasn't a uh, Secrets of Life and Death book, I guess. Or maybe it just doesn't work. Got a couple more readers here. Let's see. Well, still no necromancers, but... Issy Hodesidast, the human scholar, is visiting. That's pretty interesting. Yep, here they are on the top right corner. Well, I'm actually a little concerned for them, I guess. I mean, hopefully they can get to the fortress, but I guess we'll see. I'm gonna have to unlock the doors, I guess. Carefully now. Alright, door is unlocked. And I'm just gonna watch the door here, because we don't want any zombies running in. Damn it, here comes a zombie. Alright, I'm locking it back up. <laughs> oh no, now it's chasing our guest. Well, that's not great, you know, not a, not a great visit. Overall, I wouldn't think. Yeah, let's try again, huh? Oh, and they're in. Good. Oh man, that's great. Lock up the doors. And yeah, we now have a visiting human scholar. Very cool. He's currently discussing a division with one of my dwarves, and he came here initially because he was curious about our library. Not too sure how he heard about the place, but I guess he did. Well, neato. Oh, and uh, we actually have another human now. Oh boy. Yep, over on the side here. Well, I guess we're gonna play the door locking game again. Oh, hey now, two scholars. Good. Welcome to Trade Hoof. And if you look down here, I'm actually making a little back entrance, so it should be a little easier to get those guests into the fortress now, I think. I would hope anyways. But yeah, we have a couple human scholars here now. Pretty interesting, actually. I've never really made use of libraries while playing before. Now, they're both discussing division currently. I'm not sure what that does exactly. And if we look down here, you can see poor Uthra is still in his room, still very injured. And you know, I just realized he's been sleeping for quite some time. Um, like a, like a long time, maybe like a month, perhaps? Just sleeping in the corner of his room. That's pretty strange, huh? Well, I'm not too sure what's gonna come of that poor guy. Alright, well, it looks like this scholar here is trying to leave the fortress. And he's carrying a book as well. This Chromite-bound codex. I checked it out and it is not one of the Necromancer books. It says in its description that it concerns the tower Ancient Shoved. While a book like this one here specifically says it concerns the secrets of life and death. This is a Necromancer book. And I checked out all the books in my fortress. We do have two of them. So either it is my dwarves aren't reading them, or they just can't become necromancers. We'll just give it some more time, I guess. And as for you, human scholar, get the hell out of trade hoof. There he goes, and he's out of here. Oh, looks like one of our visitors just got killed by zombies. Well, that's the risk you face when you come to trade hoof, I guess. You know, trade hoof is a tiny, crappy little fortress. There's not many people living here, but I'll be damned if it isn't starting to grow on me. Got this just a small group of dwarves here, kind of cloistered away in their little underground cell, with their forbidden knowledge just studying the day away. And they're led by a necromancer. Not some boring old necromancer, mind you. It's a horseshoe crab man. He just sleeps in his little room here, but still somehow commands these dwarves, seemingly. Pretty interesting. I mean, this guy's been asleep here for months at this point. I'm not too sure what the deal with that is. From this point forward, he shall be dubbed the Slumbering Lord. That's pretty cool, huh? The humans frequently visit the dwarves here and try to take our damn books like this guy here. Get the hell out of here. You're not taking our books. Yeah, I'm getting sick of that. So I'll tell you what. Let's go get him, dwarves. Okay, now they're, they're chasing this human scholar around the fortress and they killed him. Well, you know, that's what you get. You don't take our books. But yeah, I'm kind of liking this whole thing so far. Now, the big question I was hoping to answer in this episode was whether or not my dwarves can actually become necromancers by reading those books. And I have not seen it happen yet. Not that I could tell anyways. Well, we do still have some time left, so I'm just going to let as much time pass as possible and see if any of my dwarves do end up becoming necromancers eventually. I'm really hoping someone becomes a necromancer. I'll be right back. Oh, we have an artifact here. Tun Sokanmosus, the scholar, has created Mkethlykot. 
a reindeer bone crossbow. That's pretty cool. Let's take a look. The Just Inks. This is a reindeer bone crossbow. All craft worship is of the highest quality. It is encircled with bands of reindeer bone. That's it. Really not that exciting, but I have a pretty cool mental image going. A pretty cool weapon overall. It's good that it's made of bones, kind of goes with our whole necromancer theme here. Maybe I'll give it to the slumbering Lord Uthra when he gets back up on his feet. That'd be pretty cool, huh? Well, anyways, now if you take a look up here, you can see I've made the library quite a bit bigger. We still have humans coming as guests, reading our books. I don't think any of them have stolen any more of our books, which is good. And at this point, I've made all the dwarves in the fortress either scholars or scribes. I still don't get the point of making them scholars exactly. Now, they're all talking about screws at the moment. That's the big discussion of the day, apparently. Now, at this point, I have looked online, and I have seen that people claim that your dwarves will become necromancers if you do get necromancer books in your fortress. Books that describe the topic of the secrets of life and death. Which I do have. I have two of them right now. So I'm not sure what the deal is. Eh, I'm not too sure. I'm just gonna keep letting time pass for now, and we'll see what happens. Oh, and once again, the dead walk, hide while you still can. Not a big deal, really, I don't think. We have a couple necromancers this time, as well as some more zombies. Everyone get to the fortress, please, hurry up. Oh wow, that is a lot of zombies this time. Holy crap. We have a couple human necromancers this time. I have to imagine they're from that tower. We're not getting their slab back, bunch of bastards. Alright, now all the dwarves are inside and the gates are locked. We're completely safe. And our animals are again forfeit. Quite a shame. Well, if you take a look down here, you can see the slumbering lord is no longer in his chambers. And I guess it's because I actually made a tunnel here all the way down to some water in the caves. I actually just noticed a problem up here before I go any farther with that. Um, so I had nicened up this meeting area here. Got some new workshops here. But I forgot there's still holes in the ceiling now that are currently uh, uncovered. Not fantastic. I'm going to try to get those covered up real quick. Like seriously quick. Very dangerous. Alright, the wall is going up here. Almost there. And we're good, okay. Completely safe, once more. Anyways, as I was saying, our lord is back up on his feet thanks to this water down in the caves here. Our medical dwarf was able to get some of this nasty ass water and clean out his wounds. And he jumped right up and got to work. Oh, and actually another interesting facet to our lord here, his vision is lost. He's currently blind. I'm not sure when it happened, but I imagine it was when he was fighting with that elf corpse. I just hadn't noticed it. So now he is Uthra the Blind Lord. Still pretty cool. Well, if we take a look here, you can see we're up to 45 dwarves now. All of them are scholars, and they spend their days discussing all sorts of different things. Mineral remedies, nothingness, reproductive behavior, you name it, it's discussed here. But still, no necromancers. Now, um, something I have noticed is those books, which I, I've been calling necromancer books, that contain the secrets of life and death. Most of them are still sitting here in this dormitory where Uthra first dropped them, including the two texts that concern the secrets of life and death. And I'm not too sure what's up with that. I have noticed that all these ones sitting on the floor here are either scrolls or parchments, not books. Dwarves did take the books and brought them to the library right away, but not these ones. Which doesn't really make a lot of sense to me, why not read these things? Maybe they have to be a book in order for a dwarf to read them. That's a bit annoying, really. I guess I could take Uthra back out to that tower and uh, try to get some actual books for them to read. That might solve our problem, but it still doesn't make any sense why dwarves wouldn't read scrolls. Well, okay. Um, experiencing a turn at the moment. Um, we had walled off that little section with the holes on the roof easy enough, but I guess I'm kind of beating around the bush. Apparently we didn't lock the front doors is what, what it looks like. I'm pretty sure I did, but I mean, that wouldn't explain the zombies walking through the front doors right now. Uh, you can see down here, there's currently a, a goblin zombie and a human zombie in with all our scholars. Nobody has any experience in fighting or anything. And if you take a look over here, Uthra, our ever helpful blind lord, in his second attempt at creating helpful zombies for our fortress, reanimated a llama head, and I believe its body is somewhere around here too, so two parts of a llama zombie are now wandering around the library, attacking scholars as well. Not helpful, mind you. Well, I'll tell you what, this was certainly a fun episode. I really enjoyed learning more about the whole necromancer system here, toyed around with a library, something I haven't really done before. And our horseshoe crab character here is particularly interesting, I'd say. I'm a big fan. I think I'm actually going to do a part two of this short fourth episode. What do you say? And hopefully next time we can learn some more about the whole necromancer thing. I really want to see some necromancer dwarves. As I said, people claim that dwarves can be necromancers. So maybe I'll try getting some actual books for dwarves to read. If they survive this whole uh, zombie infestation thing here. That'd be pretty neat, huh? I think that's what I'm going to do. This will be a two-part episode. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed watching this little short forts episode here, and I do hope you'll join me next time for part 2 of this episode. Anyways, if you have any feedback on what I should try differently in this next episode, or just any old opinion on how things are going so far, please let me know in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it. That's gonna be it for today, and until next time, you bearded bastards!